Hello, Dolly. Mm, you want something? Well, good morning, everybody. Danny Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. Uh, guys, this in the background is what happens when you separate cows from their calves. This is a mild morning. It's been really, really bad, but they're getting better. They're still hollering for mama, and they're looking for mama. But, uh, guys, we got the old cub out of the barn. Uh, she's dirty. She's been sitting in the barn for uh, all winter. And, uh... They some things about it I want to tell you here, uh, if I can get down off of it. We, uh, we're going we're gonna to be uh, doing some conversion on it uh, because I'll be honest with you, this six volt system is just not working out for me. Uh, I'm having to order a battery if I need to order one. They don't keep them in stock here nowhere and you have, it's just a hard time finding them. Uh, it's a lot to do with the charging system. I've got to, I've got these wires here. I have to excite the generator every time I redo it. Uh, take the battery cables off. It's just, it's just a headache. 12 volt batteries are common, so I've ordered the conversion kit. We're gonna be putting this thing in the shop, and we're gonna be just converting it over to 12 volt. And we'll take you along on that journey when we get there. But first off, I want to say, and don't think anything about this water and antifreeze you see here. <laughs> I overfilled it this year on purpose through the winter months because we had such a hard freeze. I didn't want nothing happening to my tractor. And then I did find out that I had the wrong radiator cap on it. The, the original owner had just stuck a regular radiator cap on it. And after doing some research, I had to have a totally different kind of re, uh, a radiator cap because this is a siphon system. So we got that took care of. And uh, I want to thank some subscribers. Uh, Keith. I'm not going to call his last name. He'll know who he is. Uh, Keith sent me a whole bunch of cub parts from Michigan. And bless his heart, he didn't have to do that, but he done it anyway. And I am so thankful for it. You'll never know how hard it is to find parts for these things. You know what I mean? And then what they cost. So thank you, Keith. Now, Keith sent me... I got a whole bunch of these stiff shank uh, cultivator uh, points sticking down here with sweeps on them. 
and uh, the clevises and the pins, Keats and all that stuff uh, hadn't been painted yet. I want to try it all out and make sure it's all in good working order. Uh, thank you, Keith. Now, I wouldn't be using the stiff shanks if I was in new ground. I would be using the spring-loaded ones like this, the number 16s for a cub if I was in new ground. But this is not new ground. I'm not worried about hitting a stump. So I'm able to uh, use the ones that Keith sent me. Now, we're going to get them cleaned up and get them painted to to eventually match everything. Now, in the front here, the opening plow right here, I got this out of an old barn from an elderly gentleman. Uh, he was getting rid of a lot of his stuff, so I, I bought a lot of his parts from him. This is what they used to use to open up the rows to plant with. This is a, we call it a bull tongue, um, to put out here for opening up the rows. And then another YouTube friend of mine, Mr. Joey from JT West. Um, guys, if y'all love farm all tractors, go watch his channel. I, I love Joey. I love them to death. I mean, the guys just helped me out a tremendous amount about knowing what to do and how to do it and everything and just watching him. And a uh, good Christian man. That's what I love about him. But he sent me these, uh, I call them bull tongues. I think he calls them plow points. But uh, that's, in the south, we call them a bull tongue. But uh, to put back here instead of sweeps behind my tractor. And I'm going to tell you what. I did not know what a difference it actually made. My front wheels can fall right into a furrow now. It ain't no problem to do. I mean, this just makes plowing so much more easy. Guys, we've got the rows laid off here now for our snap beans, and we're going to be planting the Cherokee yellow wax bean. That's the one we found does the best for us here in the deep south. The bush. The bush, yes. Not not the... <laughs> we're not talking about that other. That, that got to be a sore subject last year. <laughs> <laughs> the vining is not happening. Yeah, the pole beans just ain't going to happen. Uh, but look, this thing laid off the most beautiful rows for us. I mean, I had tilled it about a week ago. And let it lay and of course there's still a lot of little green vegetation still in it but guys i'm telling you this cub that's done, the prettiest rose i've ever seen that's the prettiest rose we've ever done i mean thank you jt thank you keith thank you mr elderly gentleman i'm not gonna call his name who we bought the plows from at the barn y'all have made our our well, let's use the word cultivating before i get in trouble um our cultivating has been so much easier this year and it, it just looks amazing to me wait until they see you plant the danny corn oh wait till i see all the stuff i've got to plant that danny corn with y'all gonna freak out over that now i know you're gonna like that one uh, but now you can't be too hard on me because i've never used the planter system like i've got and I'll, it's gonna be a learning experience we're gonna plant the wax beans and we're gonna use my magic tool to do it with All right, guys, we're going to be using some 82424. Anytime you start little seedlings off, you don't want to use anything high in nitrogen. You want your nitrogen to be low to start with. Uh, these are uh, a green bean. They're a nitrogen fixer anyway. We don't want big old leggy plants with no beans on them. Uh, this is high in potassium and phosphorus and potash and stuff so we want to make sure that uh, we get good root development rather than plant development first and uh, we don't want to burn up our seeds when they first start coming up
Guys, I've got to clean my hoe up. We use it over at Pecan Grove. And uh, the soil over there is not like the soil here. It's a real heavy soil. And it sticks. We're not used to that here at the Deep South. Our soil is sandy. And the dirt just kind of falls off of it. You don't have to worry about it. But, um, but anyway, I know, I know y'all going to ask me the question. Somebody is. If I got a planter and I can plant the corn with a cub, why am I not planting the snap beans? Well, the bottom line is this. I don't have a bean plate. Uh, because if I had a bean plate, believe me, I probably would be using it. Because it's just a one swipe pass. I could set it up, plant the beans, and then go load it up, take it to the other property, and I could plant the corn. But you fertilize too. I could fertilize it, plant it, do it all at the same time. Yeah. You know? Saves a lot of trips. Saves a lot of trips. It saves a lot just right here. Um, and gas. Lots of gas, everything. So Time. Yep, time. Uh, that's It does a, a much better job. <laughs> um, but that's why I'm not planting the beans because I don't have a bean plate. Uh, when I get a bean plate for it in the future, hopefully, we'll be planting things like beans and I'm going to need a pea plate. Uh, I've got a corn plate, I believe. I believe uh, when I bought it, I believe the plate in it is for corn. Uh, if it ain't, I'll manufacture it for corn. But uh, that's why we're not using the cub to plant with. And basically all I'm doing, guys, is I'm just mixing the fertilizer in with the soil so that the bean is not sitting right in raw fertilized. Wait for the cows to finish. Well guys, here we are back with my tool that I made here a few years ago. Uh, this is our planter. Now lots of other YouTube channels have really took this to the next level. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hollis and Ms. Nancy at Hollis and Nancy's uh, YouTube channel. They have, uh, I think Mr. Hollis put a stainless steel bucket on his. Uh, now mine's ambidextrous. Uh, uh, I, I'm ambidextrous. I can use my left hand or my right hand, so it doesn't really matter to me. But there are people who are left-handed. We put it off over here because they have to they, they use their left hand. I'm right-handed, so I can pick it up, put it here. Now, if you wanted to and you have a hard trouble getting your seed in a little pipe like this, I have heated these and took something and, and watered around and made them like a funnel on top. Or you can actually uh, glue you a plastic funnel into it with a little small one if you want to, if it makes it a little bit easier on you. If you have trouble, like arthritis or something, you have trouble getting your seeds in it. Uh, now, at the bottom here, I have a six inch piece of pipe here. This is my spacing, it's six inch spacing. You can change that. That just, you know, will pull out and you put them out 12 inches. If you like corn, if you want to do corn 16 inches apart, which is what I do, my corn is 16. Or if you want something two inches, you, you just fix this, as, you don't glue it. In other words, this is interchangeable on it. Now, there's been several people who's improved on this because of uh, dirt stopping it up. They've made some changes for that. And, and I think that's fantastic. That's the whole premise of, of doing this type of stuff is improvising and making stuff fit what you need. You know, I mean, this is not the... This is not rotten stone, okay? This is just a prototype for each one of us to, to learn from. Now, this is an old Maxwell House coffee can. You can use whatever you want. Just use what you got. In other words, you don't have to go to town and get a Maxwell House coffee can. No. Throw the coffee out because you don't no. like it and use and the this, can. And this is old scrap PVC, scrap PVC fittings. I mean, it's all just scrap stuff, you know? So it didn't cost technically anything to make this it was all going to be throwed away stuff anyway so i'm loving it because it makes it easier on me we get our seeds from well we save our own seed now when i plant these snap beans here there's not going to be any other beans around these because i isolate mine at 100 yards or more and we save ours these are from 2020 i had a really good harvest that year the seeds are still perfectly fine i uh 
I've had such bad luck trying to order seed from seed company and get what I actually ordered that I lose a year's growth and all this kind of stuff and I don't like that. Now you can look at them here. There's nothing wrong with these seeds. They're perfectly beautiful looking seeds. Now these could be uh these could be dry beans if you want to use them for dry beans. Yeah. And you can eat them. They have no chemicals on them. Anything like that. Um I you use them however you want. You can that's the beauty of saving your own seed is you can eat them or you can plant them. Okay, we're just gonna drop one bean at a time. And when I drop it, see, I, I like my plant seeds to be about six inches apart. I can move over. I can drop another one. This is perfect spacing. I don't have to worry about. There's no bending over because I've got a bad back. Everything is literally there's no wasting of seeds, but seeds are getting to be expensive. And uh, not only that, a lot of them are just kind of hard to come by, to be honest with you. And I really prefer saving my own seed. All right, guys, we're gonna be covering up the seeds now. We're gonna be using a garden rake. For those of you who don't know, this is a garden rake. This is the implement of choice for doing this. Now, uh, another thing I thought about while I was sitting here planting, a lot of people's gonna ask this question. Well, I thought you had a Hoss Tool Seeder. Well, I do, and I do have the plates to plant it with. And yes, it would have been okay. But since we till this, you'll notice, let me show you some stuff right here. You see all this green stuff right here that was still under the soil from where I tilled it a week or so ago? The soil has been so cool, this stuff didn't die. And then we got all of our leaves. We compost all of our leaves back into the gardens. When you're using a cedar, pushing it, this stuff hangs all up on the front of it and the leaves bank up against it and stuff like that and it doesn't do a really good job you get a lot of spaces in it now if you've got perfectly tilled clean ground i highly recommend using the hoss tool cedar I, I highly recommend it i love it when the ground is clean but the first planting in the spring like this is usually a little tough because there's this green vegetation and we still have the leaves that have not decomposed in the soil because we put all the organic matter back into the soil and till it in and that's why a lot of y'all don't have the Hoss tool cedar or the earthway cedar or different ones and you have to do it by hand so i would ra rather show it by hand to you how to do it because that's the way most are going to end up doing it because uh, those things are expensive to purchase and uh, a rake I think I paid 20 bucks for a rake a uh, little effort I mean these seeds don't need to be over a half an inch deep so I just kind of lightly I mean I just lightly rake the soil over them like this and when you got a garden rake what you can do is that garden rake will come back and all these leaves and stuff that gets on here it'll pull every bit of that stuff back off out of the way and throw it off out here on the sides of the rows where it'll break down a little bit later on. And that's, this is all I do right here. I just go down through here and when I knock it over, I come right back and I pull that stuff off of there out to the side of the row. Not gonna hurt anything. It'll decompose on the sides just as well as it will in the middle. We can just Lightly cover it. Now you can even take it a step further if you want to because the secret to seed germination is seed soil contact. 
You can even take a garden rake and you can come back and do this right here if you want to. You can come down through here and just do it. It's real easy to do. And what that does is that brings your soil and your seed in contact with one another. It's like a planter behind a tractor or a horse tool seed or anything like that. It drops the seeds, it covers them, and then you have a compaction wheel that comes behind it and it presses the dirt down against the seed so there's not that air pocket in the soil. Look at that. Piece of sweet. Piece of sweet potato from last year, still good in the soil where the tiller cut it up. Well, guys, we're through planting our Cherokee yellow wax beans. Now this is four, best I remember, 64 foot rows. Four 64 foot rows. Uh, might give us enough to make it for another year. I'm hoping that it does anyway, because we eat a lot of wax beans. And uh, some of y'all are going to ask these questions. I'm trying to go through these questions in my mind as I'm doing this, because I'll think back on previous videos, the questions that were asked, and I want to try to answer them in these videos. Um, one, we're in Zone 8. We're 30 miles north of the Mississippi Gulf Coast. So we're planting. It is March the 4th. I can't tell you when to plant where you're at. Uh, you have to look at your last frost date. Now, technically, this is not our last frost date, but looking ahead with the weather, um, they're not showing anything for us colder than 38 degrees for most of March. Uh, now, that can change, and we can get bit, and if we do... We got enough seeds, we just redo it. I mean, that's the name of the game. You, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I've lost some years, but I've won more than I've lost. So, guys, the the cub, I'm fixing to take it and give it a bath. Wash all my plows off because I don't leave no dirt on my plows or nothing like that. I always clean them up. I'm going to give it a bath and then stay tuned because it's going to make its next debut over at Pecan Grove. Now, it's going to take me a little while to set the cultivators, the fertilizers, the seed distributors, and all that kind of stuff up on it. i got to take it back to the barn and unhook all the plows, rehook all the other plows up. I guess that's where modern technology has made it a lot easier. Because now you can back up and take a three-point hitch and hook up to a Covington planter or a fast hitch if you've got a fast hitch system. Uh, with one of these, you could just do the fast hitch system. I don't have all that. Mine is still the old-fashioned way. With the Covington planters, you can just hook up three-point hitch in two minutes, dump your fertilizer in it, dump your seeds in it, put the right plates in it, and get after it. But what I've learned with the Cub, I can do the detail stuff. I can get right down up against the plants because I've got the, uh, I've got the sweeps, I've got the half sweeps, I've got the layoff sweeps. I have all this stuff, and my plants are right in front of my face as I'm plowing. I can see the dirt just rolling up to them real slow. It makes gardening to me so much simpler. And then when I was working out here a while ago, I told Wanda, I said, I remember when I was a child doing this. My daddy on the tractor, the cub, was plowing the fields. Us kids and mama was coming behind him and fertilizing and covering and planting seeds and covering we planted our whole crop in one day we would do it all in one day and my daddy believed in fertilize my daddy put around 600 to 700 pounds per acre he would get on to us kids he said you're not putting enough fertilize you know and, he, and i mean we would just yeah you know, we could barely hold a bucket up you know and we we're just going along there just dumping it and but my daddy, that man, growed some food. His land was always flourishing with food because my daddy was a logger, and he didn't have time at home to be worrying with the garden all the time. It was his job. It was our job as the kids and mama to take care of that garden during the week, and on the weekends, he would do any cultivating that needed to be done, 
and it was up to us to keep it weeded, um, keep it, uh, make sure there's no bugs on anything, and uh, to keep it picked and to keep it canned. That's what he expected from us. And that was just the old way. Well, now, Wanda and I do the best we can do at our age because there's only two of us. We try to make things as simple as we can. I know some people's going to gripe and complain because I use the commercial fertilize. I amend my soils with organic matter all year. I have my soil tested. I find earthworms in my soil all the time. I'm not hurting my soil one bit in the world. My salt content's not bad. A plant does not know the difference between organic versus inorganic. Most of your organic fertilizers, if you go and do the research on them or talk to the people who make them, the companies, they will tell you that you get about 8% up front and you get about 40% three to four months down the road from it because it has to break down in the soil. If you ever look on one of these bags of commercial fertilizer, it will tell you guaranteed analysis on it. Organic fertilizers normally don't tell you guaranteed analysis because you really don't know what you're going to end up with long term. Now I do use a lot of organic fertilizers. I use bone meal. I use blood meal. I use all these different types of things. But for things like peas and beans and corn and all that in the field, it's not worth it to me to do that. I just get the commercial fertilizer and just go for it because I'm about producing food, guys. I'm not about trying to be the perfect little organic gardener I want to eat. One other thing I want to mention about this particular garden right here is this is the garden that I dumped all my goat poop in five years ago. We dumped like 10 tractor bucket loads of goat poop in here and tilled it in. I didn't know at the time about Grazon and I rent this piece of ground. It has taken five years of trying to get that out of my soil in order for me to be able to grow again. And I'm I'm going to be watching this year because Grazon, if you don't use a monocot to pull it out, now, you know, it can take up to 10 years to get it out of your soil. That's why we quit using animal manure until we literally got our own place over at Pecan Grove where we know nothing has been sprayed in over 30 something years and then the man I knew then didn't spray anything. It's been 30 years. Nothing is, is given a problem over there. Everything is flourishing. And when we move our cows from here to over there and the hay that we do use, we know comes from a young gentleman who does not spray and we will use our manure once we get over there. Over here, we still have enough contamination from years past in our soils in our fields that we're a little concerned about. Um, it should be over by now because we haven't actually used any outsourced hay from stores or anything like that now for three years and the monocot is a grass and the grass is growing pulling it out all the time. Research says in three years if you have a monocot which is like grass or corn uh, it will actually deplete it from the soil and it's gone. So we should be okay after this year um, from anything being in the soil that's contaminated anymore uh, because now this year everything's flourishing around us and we believe that we're good. So just a heads up if you're using a lot of animal manure about that. Be sure where your hay comes from. I learned the hard way. I actually burnt half of one of my greenhouses. Had to dig all the soil out and replace it. And, and still, I find containers that have a little bit left in it. So guys, anyway, uh, we fix and go take the cub and go give him a bath, get him cleaned all up, go put him back in the barn, take all the plows off of it, and start rearranging all the new plows for Pecan Grove. So if you want to see what it looks like over at Pecan Grove, go over to Patreon, uh, pay us a visit over there. And if you want to see the cub in action again, we're going to have it in action over at Pecan Grove. If you're not wanting to go over to Patreon and join up, you can hang around because at some point we'll show snippets of the Danny Corn over there. 
on Deep South Homestead. Guys, we don't put it on Deep South Homestead because it's not Deep South Homestead. It's Pecan Grove. But because it's the Danny Corn, we will be showing little snippets of videos over there showing the progress of the Danny Corn, but we won't be showing you the details. I mean, it'll just be snippets of it um, because that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But anyway, stay with us, guys. If you like this kind of content, let us know below. You know, if it um, you hit the like button, subscribe, do whatever you need to do there to be able to stay informed about how to grow your own food because in the times that we're living in, it is going to be imperative that you raise your own food. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. Now it's time to start taking all the plows off of it and putting all the planter system on it because we've got some planting to do.